Good afternoon, Poké Sports. Welcome to another VGC Battle Stadium Series 12 video, bringing you a top of Coco team. Now, this team is from Olsen Matt on Twitter. We'll make sure to link them down below in the description next to the rental code. But I'm very excited to use this team. This team uh, got them overall 1760 in the IC, which is not uh, not too shabby. It's a pretty good record, especially when you're using Pokemon like Tapu Koko, right? But I think Tapu Koko is interesting in the sense that it deals with Rinya kind of well because one, it outspeeds Charizard, and two, it's not a rock move, it's an electric move. And there's also Nature's Madness and Thunder Wave support on this set. So I feel like if I lead Coco or if I bring Coco, people are going to expect a Dynamax out of Coco. It's theoretically not a Dynamax Mon. I can do it, right? I have Max Lightning everywhere on this team. I have it on Thunders, I have it on Coco, I have it on Dialga. But um, it's not necessarily the first option, which is actually pretty cool. We do have a secondary terrain here also with the with the Ndidi, if I want to set up the Psychic Terrain. Also running Muscle Band on Thunderous. I understand why we're doing it. It's because the Life Orb was already, was already taken on the Dialga spot, but I don't know, it feels weird. It feels like I should just stick Adamant Orb on Dialga and then give Life Orb back to Thunderous. But hey, it does it does make your opponent think, right? It's like they don't see the Life Orb chip, so they're gonna be like, hmm, he's probably a Salt Vested. <laughs> or, you know, I don't know. He saw Vest speaking of which is on the Ogre, so that's going to be a pretty decent Dynamax option for us, especially with the Hyper Beam. We'll see if we get to use it today. And also, who could forget the Shedinja? Let's see how this goes. If you guys are excited to see Tapu Koko here on the channel, you know what to do. Hit the like button down below and subscribe to Pokesports if you haven't done so already. Let's get on to today's battles. Whoa, there's a lot of things going on here. Necrozma Dawn Wings. Okay, so they have the whole Lyprid copycat nonsense. Which is a little irritating, but theoretically we can beat it with Follow Me and Didi, so that's fine. Um, so I think we're just going to do that right away. We're just going to leave with the Ndidi and then deal with that immediately. Um, the rest of the team doesn't really threaten me too much. I feel like Thunderous can kind of tear it up here. I'll bring the Coco in the back because this is the Coco video. And I think maybe Dialga? Do we bring Shedinja? Do we need Shedinja? Shedinja would be good into their Ogre. Be good into their Rilla, be bad into their instant, and be bad into their stacka. Uh, let's bring Dialga. Dialga has one. The Trick Room, if we have to undo their Trick Room, if they somehow still manage to get it up. And two, resists the majority of their team. So that's pretty nice. Um, specifically the Ogre. And then bring my own Ogre. I don't think I have to do that because they have a Rilla. And, you know, usually when you have a Rilla and your opponent has an Ogre, you bring the Rilla. Shocker. Weird, right? <laughs> so let's just avoid that entire nonsense. We'll make them bring a Pokemon for absolutely no reason because we didn't even bring the Pokemon they intended to KO. And we'll go from there. I mean, the, the issue is with Rilla is that even if you don't bring Ogre, it's still very annoying because that's priority. So. But I think I think we have uh, I think we have what we need to win here, though. Then we have the Pokemon that we need. We'll see if, if we can even use Coco today. I mean, I've been using Coco in some practice games on Showdown because I like to, you know, practice before I get on the ladder just to save me and you some time. Um, ooh. Is that min speed Rilla? That's the question. It isn't, so that's good news. But that's still a stack of that we're still going to have to deal with somehow. And I still don't know how to deal with somehow. This is a little problematic, not going to lie. I'll be straight up. Stacka is a little scary. I think we go hard into the Dialga here. And part of me wants to fly, like to be honest. I don't want to commit to Dynamaxing, but flying might be a play? Or we just foul play the Stacka. I think, honestly, yeah, maybe foul play the Stacka is smarter. I think Stacka goes for Trick Room 100% of the time. Just look at their team, right? Look at the team, look at my team. They're going for Trick Room. Um, So I feel like we don't have to be too reserved this turn one. We don't have to go for Follow Me. We don't have to, you know, worry about that nonsense. We just have to get a better Pokemon on the field that can deal with Stacka better. And I think Dialga is that Pokemon. All right, let's exert some pressure. Well, that's not Trick Room, huh? 
That's not Trick Room at all. That's Dynamax Staka. Okay, I'm about to get rock falled in the face. I guess I could have redirected. Oh my goodness. Who does that? You don't set Trick Room in front of me? Man, you're going to get quaked next turn. Foul play is going to do absolutely no damage. Followed by the U-turn. You turning out into... Oops. Heck if I know. Gets the crit with the U-turn too. Add an insult to injury. Alright, what uh what Pokemon do you think? Is this gonna be the Lightbird now that I got rid of my oh please no. Now that I got rid of my of my counter to Lightbird, they're gonna bring it in. Just watch. Oh no, it's Ogre, okay. So they bring in Ogre. I mean, I still have Coco, so I'm not entirely saddened by this. Because I will just lose my Thunderous here. This could have been avoided by it. I am so happy that I did not die in the max. That, that makes me so happy. Because at the very least, I didn't burn the Dynamax. I can now Dynamax my Staka. Not Staka. Dialga. Is this defense or attack? Okay, so it's it's the lonely set. And they're lefties ogre. So many questions. All right. Okay, I think we go into Coco now. Coco could Thunder Punch Ogre, which will still do a lot of damage. And we just Quake the Staka. Unfortunately, I'm going to be losing my Sash here. Next turn, not this turn. Or I'll just be dying next turn, rather. Yeah, I think we just go for the Quake. Do they have any floaties? I don't believe so, actually. I don't believe they have any, have any flying Pokemon on their team. No, none. Okay, they do have a Rilla. But if they, if they swap Rilla, then they are wild, right? They might swap Rilla on the Ogre spot just to get rid of Electric Terrain. Which I'll be fine with. It's not the end of the world if they do that. I mean, this is a pretty, you know, good turn to swap the, the Kyogre, I think. Or at least protect with it. I'm mainly concerned about the stack, though. This is Life Orb boosted. It's going to be Max Quake, which is four times effective. And it's on the special side, which stack I lacks a little bit, thankfully. So I'm fairly confident in our damage output. Like I said, that no trick room turn one. Wow. <laughs> All right, Dialga. Let's impress me, please. I theoretically could have attacked the Ogre here, too, but I do feel like uh, the stack is the primary target number one. It's the bigger issue on the field. Ogre does protect. All right, now let's see how much the Quake does. Thunder Punch is going to go into nowhere. Now let's see a Life Orb Quake from Dialga. This is a fully offensive Dialga, too. That's what I like to see. That's what we like to see. Nice. Okay. Issue number one dealt with. We traded their Dynamax for our Undynamax Thunderous. I think that's pretty pretty even now. Uh, they are probably going to get the switch in on the Rilla, if I had to guess, which will give them some priority against my Coco. It'll also give them... Honestly, let them, though, right? Let them. Go ahead. I have Max Wormwind. I could just hit the Ogre with the Max Wormwind and lower the attack on the Rilla. I feel like the Alga just gives me way too many options here. In comes Rilla. That's fine. We protect and we Wormwind Ogre. Done. We have Lightning for Ogre too, but I think the Wormwind is more beneficial. Because it'll it'll weaken the Rilla at the same time. And like, I'm honestly... Oh no, we don't have Wormwind. I just realized we have Quake, Lightning, and Steel Spike. Well, I'm guess, I guess we're going for Lightning. It also get rid of... I mean, it also gets rid of the Rilla terrain. So it won't have priority next turn. So, I guess that's kind of good. We just protect Coco here. Rilla fake outs into the Coco spot. I mean, I, I think a baby could have told you that was going to happen. <laughs> Followed by the Max Lightning. Life Orb boosted onto the Ogre. Going to be left at like 5 HP. Okay. We like that. If they went for Origin Pulse, they're trolling. I'm going to lose some life orb, of course, followed by the Calm Mind. I mean, you don't got a lot of health left. That's the good news. 
The good news is that there's not much health left. I still have one more turn of the Dynamax. Oh, that's right, sand damage. Will sand damage save us? Oh, yes, it does. They weren't expecting the lightning. Oh, okay, that turn ideal for us. Absolutely ideal. What's their last? Necrozma. Oh, here we go. Here we go. There. This is the play now. The play is blow the heck up this Necrozma. With Nature's Madness, which will bring it down to half HP, and then hopefully Dialga can clean the rest. Never mind. It's fine, I think. I wasn't really expecting them to trick him. That's why we doubled that spot. I don't think they're going to be able to knock out my Coco, though, with the Grassy Glide, because we're raising our defenses now. And we're getting some chip damage on the Crossman, which, hey, I'll take. Do we, start, uh, do we have to start worrying about this Rillaboom, too? Is Rillaboom going to slowly take over the game? It could. Oh, it has horsepower. Okay, I guess I have to worry about Rilla. We do thankfully take it because of the steel spike boost. Nice. Hanging in there. That's good. I think same thing, except we won't be Dynamax. But I think Nature's Madness plus insert hard hitting move here is the play. So let's go for Flash Cannon. Let's go for Nature's Madness and let's do some damage to Necrozma here. The thing with the Krozma is that super effective moves aren't super effective against it, so there's no point. Are you kidding? Ah. Oh. 30% chance. <laughs> and somehow it always works. Oh, they made me just waste that turn, man. Well, there goes Coco. Now what? What do I do? <laughs> Sandstorm subsides, I guess. Okay, well now I get Ndidi back on the field. I, I have to help a hand boost, I guess. That's not going to do enough damage, though. I know for a fact it's not doing enough damage. Um... Why am I thinking I go for the Rilla now? Because I know I don't care with Necrozma, so I might as well go for the Rilla because Rilla's going to start high horsepowering me. I know I don't care with the Necrozma here, so there's there's very little point to go for it. If I have to undo Trick Room, I'll maybe do it the next turn. We'll see. So I think our best choice here is to just... Helping Hand boost the Flash Cannon. Hope that's enough to knock out Rilla. This Rilla could be AV, because their Ogre wasn't AV, so this might not even KO, but we're at least going to give it a shot. Mm, that's AV, yep. Double Protect, man. That's so unfortunate. Thankfully, we eat that like a rock, though. That's nice. And they TR, okay. Well, now that they TR... Do we expanding force the Rilla knock it out? I think so. Because we know that we underspeed the Rilla. And I think I try to undo Trick Room in case they go for the Ndidi spot this turn. And then, yeah, we just expanding force here. Take out the Rilla. It's not over yet. The Earth Power? Okay, it might be over. Depends on how much damage I'm about to do with Ndidi. And whether or not... <laughs> I can win the game. Oh, they're life orb. Hold on. There might be a chance, maybe. That is no damage with expanding force. Double protect is really going to lose me this game. Are you joking, dude? I'm going to protect here because trick room things. I, I guess all they have for me is Earth Power, so that's kind of good news. Let's see how much single target expanding force does versus their Earth Power Life Orb. Indeed, he saved me. Who is the superior psychic type? This legendary parasite fusion thing? Or a little rabbit? They trick room. I guess they're stalling my psychic terrain. 
But you're stalling your own trick room too, so. I honestly, I'm not gonna protect because I think Psychic Terrain is more important though, like real talk. I wanna see how much damage we're gonna take from this. That is way too much damage, that's almost half health. Oh, yikes. This is terrifying. Single targeted is really good. Twisted of Dimensions return to normal and weirdness disappears. I think I need... I need... Two more expanding forces. And I need them to hit me with one more earth power and take life orb damage and I might have a chance. Cause now we're out speeding. I live one more. Take life orb damage. They trick him again. Is that fine? That's nothing changes here. Except now I start protecting. Because now they just forced me to protect again. That's fine. Oh, this is going to be anybody's game. It's really close. If they crit me, I automatically lose. Hold on. Let's see how much health I exactly lost. 177 to 90. Oh, wait. I don't think I live. But yes, I do. I took 83 damage or something. So I, if I could take another 83, theoretically, I have a chance. <sighs> okay, well, we have to expanding force here anyway. There's no other option. Here's the earth power. Eat it up. Yep, we live at six. There's a life orb. Come on, expanding force. E yes. <laughs> Indeed, living with six HP is all we needed to defeat Jeeves. <laughs> and that's with their double protect. Jeez, that was hard. But hey, came out on top. Going against top 163, and this is one of the most toxic teams I've seen in a long time. Um, well, no matter what I do, they're going to get Trick Room up. Like, how do I even stop this? They got Goth, they got Fake Out Support, they got Porygon 2, they got... They got a lot, man. Okay, it's fine, though. If they're going to set said Trick Room up, I think we just go with as much damage as possible. We can also bait like a, a scarfed Kyogre here too. If we go Kyogre and Didi and just say, hey, fine, you do trick room things. I'm going to water spout you. I think that's pretty good. I think that's pretty, pretty decent for us. I also think Shedinja is low key very strong here because what the heck do they do to Shedinja, right? So I'm going to bring Shedinja in the back. And do I also bring Tapu Coco? Tapu Coco doesn't seem like it makes too much sense here. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, Tapu Coco definitely smells like something I should leave in the back. I mean, it could help with Nature's Madness. And dealing a significant chunk to their team. Oh, should I leave Tapu, Tapu Coco instead of Ndidi? Because, like, Nature's Madness plus... Yeah, honestly, that, that would do a lot of damage. Nah, forget it. I'm, oh, no, I'm running out of time. Well, I guess I'm committed. I bring Shedinja in the lead. <laughs> I accidentally ran out of time. Um, is this a big deal? Probably. Am I going to get punished for it? We'll see. I mean, my plan here was to go super hard with Ogre anyway. If I see that, you know, obviously Shedinja is in a bad position, I will switch it out. But thankfully, the majority of their team can't really touch Shedinja. Specifically, these two shouldn't be able to touch Shedinja. So it's a pretty decent situation here for my ogre, I think. It all kind of depends what the Dialga wants to do. Am I going to be that guy and go for ally switch turn one? I could. But I think Poltergeist into um, Goth is uh, more favorable for now. I think, uh, I mean, everyone expects me to ally switch. So I'm almost at the point where, like, when you play shit injured, just don't. Especially my opponent's like 167 in rating. Clearly a good opponent, right? So they got to know that ally switch is a tech. Looks like they're going to Dynamax their Dialga, which is very good. Because if all of our moves connect here, it means the Goth should be going down. I should be free to switch again. I mean, I'm technically free to switch right now because I have a ghost type, but I don't really find it necessary. 
This dog could be flamethrower. They're worm winding me. They expected the ally switch. That's why you just don't sometimes. And they missed the hypnosis. Honestly, I don't feel bad for my opponent. Don't feel bad at all. All right, they were focus ash. Interesting. And that's their uh, potential trick room gone. But I guess it was just a. Uh, I guess it was just a pretty little uh, <laughs> hypnosis set. I guess. Ugh, disgusting. Okay. Well, they fell for it. Now, will they expect me to ally switch turn two? That is the question. Did Porygon 2 just trace my Wonder Guard? How do I win? I have no fighting type moves. I lost. Why is that? Why can you even trace that? Why is that even possible? Oh, you have no idea how sad. Can can the Porygon to switch out, please? Can you please leave, Pete? Then <laughs> you traced Wonder Guard. <sighs> At least they fell for it twice. But this is so sad. This water spot is gonna do absolutely nothing because Wonder Guard on P two. I can't hit it. I got a timer stall. What else do I do? Oh, and they have foul play. Oh my goodness. I just... Oh, onto Ogre. Okay, that's fine. Okay, I think I don't click it this time. And instead I hard swap. I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. How do I win? I don't. I just can't. Does Nature's Madness eventually knock out? Probably not. Oh, this is so silly. I'm going to switch to Origin Pulse here. This is so dumb. I'll bring it to timer if I have to. Man, if I have to, if this is going to be the last. Okay, here's the way to win. I got to start playing to timer like right now. I got to ignore this P2 for the rest of the game. Okay, they didn't fall for it that time. We are AV though, so we should take that. Nice. All right. I got to ignore this P2 for the rest of the game. And I got to make sure I have enough Pokemon alive to win on timer. This is so dumb. This is so dumb. This is so dumb. This is so dumb. At least there's a way out, right? It's not like there's no way out. Stop with this foul play nonsense. Ouch, I actually heard Top Coco a lot. Okay, well, their dialogue is, their dialogue is Dynamax is over. I do still have the option to Dynamax something, and I think I will take it here. I'll just Dynamax Coco, go for the Max Lightning onto Dialga. And then I'll swap into my DD. I really should be taking more time here. If my only way to win is timer, I should be taking a lot more time. The issue with P2 is that they're always going to have more health than me. So I have to make sure I have more Mons than them. All right. Thankfully, this Dynamax timer can take all the time in the world today. Uh, as long as it takes time, we're good. Oh, boy. I'm still in, in baffled. I'm dropping everything. I'm dropping pro controllers. How does this happen to me? Ally switch, whatever. Fine, I guess. You also have the funny button. Ah, Wonder Guard. Come on, I'm supposed to be preserving my Pokemon. I can't have you Earth powering me like that. Okay. Well, I'm going to guard and I'm going to expand. Yeah, that's our best option to spread. And I'm in the timer stall. 
The thing is, even if I timer stall, I'm not even confident that I can win. I mean, there is good news here. The good news is I will be able to knock out their Dialga this turn, theoretically. They always switch again. Yeah, this is why I did this. Okay, they're going to keep clicking that button, I guess. Blizzard. All right. And DD does not dodge it, unfortunately. Expanding force still happen, please. Nice. All right. That's all we needed. <laughs> I hate seeing that. Every time I see Wonder Guard P2, I get so angry. This is why you need to run Weezing on teams, I guess. Does Weezing stop Wonder Guard? It, it, surely it has to, right? The rain now stops. We still have Ogre in the back, thankfully. I, I would really love to have heal pulse right now, but I don't think I do. And of course they have the dog, the big dog. Okay. Um, we lightning dog. I'm not sure helping hand boosted lightning will be enough. I'm almost inclined to actually, should we just expect them to ally switch again? There's no way they do it again, right? I'm going to go for dog because I don't think they ally switch again, but just in case they do, I will follow me here. I feel like they want a foul play, right? Clearly not. They're, <laughs> they're just punishing me now. This is just punishment. How do I win? How do I win? I don't think I can anymore. I mean, if they're going to keep doing that and their ally switching a wonder guard, then I'm just going to be sad the whole time. Um... I could do the same, <laughs> I guess. Theoretically speaking, I could do the same. This battle, honestly, is kind of just funny at this point. It doesn't even make any sense anymore. And we're not even close to the timers being up. I'm going to T-Wave because I, I guess I can. And I'm going to Poltergeist because they expect me to ally switch. Okay. Fun, I guess. I mean, they have foul play, so I guess that's why they just want to click foul play. No matter what, it's still a good option for them. There's nothing I could do here. <laughs> this game is over. <laughs> like, what can I do? Wonder Guard P2. This P2 should have been dead like 17 turns ago. You know how many times I hit it with a move? All right, let's hope this is slow bulkization. Min speed bulkization. I don't know. Something dumb. Let's hope that I outspeed it with Coco. Let's hope that. Okay, hear me out. I'm gonna I'm gonna click Thunder Wave on P2, expecting them to ally switch, and I'm gonna Origin Pulse, which should then KO the Zation, maybe. Hopefully. Other than that, it's game. P2 just has to foul play me twice, and I can't do anything about it. They don't ally switch, so that's game. They're also faster, so that's game. I have no fighting moves to that game. <laughs> Man, what can you do sometimes? Sometimes you can't do anything, right? Even if they get paired 300 times, they lose this. So you know what? GG's to my opponent. I got some luck in turn one. They got some better luck in turn two. What's with the hacks today, man? Even my first battle wasn't hacks free. I'm getting, I can tell this last battle is going to be absolutely phenomenal, but let's see. I'm going to forfeit here to save us some time, but hey, Wonder Guard P2, you can't beat it. You can't. Oh, there's a lot of things going on here. All right. It's a Zacian Calyrex team. So Zacian and, uh, Nonsation. So Calyrex and Lecky are probably going to lead because that's typically how these things go. 
Uh, also, there's Charizard here, probably to counter other Sun teams, so I don't think they're going to bring it against our Ogre team. And Landorus and... Uh, Cresselia. Okay, no matter what we do, I think we set Trick Room here. We go Dialgo, we go Ndidi, and we set Trick Room. We will bring Coco. Just for nature's madness stuff. And honestly, I think it's an Ogre game here, too. Like, Ogre, Ogre goes pretty hard here, as long as we're in Trick Room, right? It's honestly it might even be a Dynamax Ogre game if I don't have uh, the utilities or the health to Dynamax the Dialga after I said Trick Room. But hey, hopefully we can use... Uh, we haven't really been using Coco all too well. <laughs> Hasn't really done anything special today. So hopefully this is the battle for Coco. Aleki leads with a Calyrex. Wow! You lead the two fastest Pokemon in the game. Incredible. Amazing. This is why we set Trick Room. Okay, now we just follow me in Trick Room. That's as simple as it gets. If they want to get Electro Web, they end up helping us, right? And this is how you... I mean, they could be in Prison Trick Room. Because I run in Prison Trick Room. But let's just hope that they're not Big Brain. Because if they are, then we have no outs anymore. We have no way out. We're just going to be a little bit sad. And cry ourselves to sleep. But hey, with the plus special defense... With the Trick Room as an option, I think this will be a pretty nice turn for us. We have to click Follow Me because I think if Alexi Lucky double attacks into my Dialga, we could be in some uh, disastrous... Oh, wait, there's a way out here for them. Uh, I didn't see it. It's uh, Max Darkness with Assurance Lucky. If they're Max Darkness with Assurance Lucky, they could lower Special Defense and then go for Astro Barrage and probably kill me. Let's hope they didn't go that far. <laughs> Let's pray. The fact that they're thinking this hard means they're probably swapping, which is amazing news for us, because I don't want to deal with either one of these mons at any moment right now. No, they're Dynamaxing. They're Dynamaxing a Dusk Ball. That's an Aleki. Oh, is no. It could be Calyrex, a Dusk Ball. That's kind of spooky. It is Calyrex. Wow. Did not expect, but I'm kind of glad to see. Not gonna be, not gonna. I'm not mad about this. Indeed, the redirection should be pretty decent here. At least their spread move options are now gone, and I'm pretty certain they don't knock out Indeedy. Unless they go for like Max Bug, T Bolt. Yeah, eat that up. All right, Indeedy's gonna take that. And they're gonna quake, so they're setting up their special defense, I guess. But Indeedy might live this. Yeah, Indeedy will live this. Awesome. Okay, well, they just showed me that I have to start worrying about uh, this Calyrex sooner rather than later, especially now that they have Max Quake. But we got the Trick Room up. I think I am going to focus down the Aleki first, though. Do I Quake? They do have a Charizard, but I highly... They have Charizard and Landorus. Maybe I shouldn't Quake then. I'm going to Steel Spike Reggie Aleki. They're Focus Sash on the horse because they weren't Life Orbs. That means they're Life Orb on the Alecky. I could follow me or I could Expanding Force. I don't know which one is better. I think Expanding Force just to break either Sash. All right. One of these is Sash. We're going to break them. They hard swap into Landorus. Perfect. This is why we Steel Spiked. Yeah. Okay. Thankfully, we know how to check what my opponent's team is before we proceed with the play. <laughs> but hey, it was their best swap. It is sad that we don't get special defense this turn. And it's also a little sad that maybe they can uh, get a really hard hit off on my Dialga with a Max Quake here. But hey, at least the Lecky lost the special defense. Oh, issue is my whole team is kind of special, so I really have to stop this thing from quaking soon. That's amazing damage onto Lander as well. Wow. Followed by the Steel Spike. Nice. So that's their Lander is gone. One Pokemon down. We're going to chip that. We're going to have to chip down their team slowly and surely. That's it. We did absolutely no damage to this Calyrus, but at least we stopped them from... Yeah, Quake, isn't, Quake now is going to hurt, isn't it? Oh, into Ndidi. 
This is why you always target the other one, no matter what. I, I, I got away with that play. <laughs> I really thought I was going to have to take a max quake there. Oh, and I didn't even click follow me. Well, now I'm definitely clicking follow me. Okay, this thing is two max quakes deep on its last turn of Dynamax. I'm going to quake now into their lucky spot since they have no more floaties. I highly, highly, highly doubt they brought Charizard as a switch in here because Charizard into Ogre makes absolutely no sense. And the way that this Alecky's playing is seeming to me like it doesn't have protect at all. Yeah, that's that that would have been the perfect turn to protect with Alecky. There's no way it's Sash either. Bye. <laughs> awesome. All right, that's two mods down. Two Okols with a Dynamax Dialga. Hey, we're putting in some work. They still can't break through an Ndidi, so that's pretty good news for us as well. This is their last turn of Dynamax, so it means we get a free turn to hit them. I mean, but they are at three max quakes. We're just going to have to go, go extremely hard here. Oh, wait, this might be Coco shot. Right? Because. Oh, we just gave him Grimnade. That's a little bit sad. Because if we can lower their health by half. Or should we just water spout? This might be our only opportunity to just like come in and water spout too. Nah, I think water spout would still do more damage, right? I understand it's plus three, but it's not going to be Dynamax. It's still going to be a full damage water spout in the rain. It's still against an uh, Azation, which is another Pokemon that doesn't want to take a full damage water spout in the rain. Um, what do I go for here, though? I think we have two more turns of Trick Room. If that was three turns of Dynamax, I, we might honestly have one turn of Trick Room left, actually. Oh, if that's the case. No, we do have two. Okay, good. We have two, so they can't just run away. And then we Quake that, and we Spout. <laughs> we double into the Calyrex, so we have to take our shot at it now. And Zation's always going to protect this turn. Yep. <laughs> I mean, that's just expected at this point. Let's see how much Water Spout does. Let's see if we regret not bringing in our Coco. That's still really good damage. Real talk, though. Let's get our special defense up with the Alga as well. Nice. That is still amazing damage. I can never complain about how much damage that still did. All right, cool. This is kind of seeming like a win. I don't want to, you know, trip over my shoelaces quite yet. Astro Barrage is still going to hurt, but actually not too bad. I st That's still within Water Spout respectable range, right? It's not like they took away half of our health or something. Still really good place to just click the Water Spout button and click the Earth Power button on Zation. And we had like the perfect amount of Trick Room turns left. Getting those two clean double KOs on my opponent's side of the field were, were definitely key to winning this battle. This is why if someone's just going to lead with the two fastest Pokemon in the game, lead your Trick Room Setter. This is also why you should always have a Trick Room Setter in the game. They go for the double. They are going to get it this time. and they, But they do get the double with the Calyrex. Not the double, the single. But I, hey, that's fine. I think the only Pokemon I needed to KO here was the Zacian anyway. Because yeah, the Calyrex can uh, double us next turn, but we have so much special defense. I don't think it matters. I have an Assault Vested Ogre with plus one special defense, and I think I have two special defense boosts on this uh, Dialga. I'm only at 113 health, though. But hey, this is simple, right? All we have to do here... I guess there's a way to guarantee this turn ends in our favor, and that's just to click Trick Room again. And then I'm just going to click Ice Beam so I don't miss. I think not attacking here would be more, but yeah. I mean, I also respect that. I had so many other options. Another option I was thinking of is swapping out into Coco just for fodder. Setting up Trick Room because there was no way my Dialga was going to go down. And then bringing in my Ogre eventually whenever Dialga did inevitably go down. But anyways, fun team. Let's go ahead and get you guys that rental code. And here you have the rental code for the Tapu Coco team. Now... 
Hop Coco didn't get to see too much action today. I mean, I did bring it to every single battle. It was just, uh, it didn't actually mean too much in most battles. I feel like Dialga kind of hard carried the team a little bit. Um, but hey, nonetheless, it was a fun team. Great time. Make sure to grab this rental walls out. Thanks again so much to Olsen Matt for providing the team. We'll make sure to link their stuff down below in the description as always. Um, word of advice, if you're deciding to bring this team onto the ladder, don't ever bring Shedinja when there's a Pokemon with Trace. Just don't do it. No matter how decent it sounds, no matter how well it does into their team, don't do it. It's not worth it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Kevin Spokey Sports. Have a great night. Peace out. Bye-bye.